tired fishing freaks. It was a late night at the horse track. There's like a bunch of fishing freaks there last night. I probably ran into a dozen fishing freaks. I think I figured out that there's a lot of FFs that are Texas country music fans, which is awesome. We should do like a Texas country music meetup one of these days. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Texas country music artist is. Maybe we should go hook up with them, go take a bass fishing. Uh, we are heading to the world famous Lake Fork right now to do some fishing and maintenance. Today is a maintenance day for the boat trailer. We've already been having issues with the trailer as of yesterday in the vlog, but today we're replacing the bunk boards. If you've ever replaced the bunk boards, you know it can be kind of a pain in the butt. The bunk boards are the things that run along your trailer and you put it up on there and they're kind of important. But old Red's trailer, she's a little rotted right now and uh, we gotta get those replaced. And I found a guy that replaces everything while you're fishing. So I was like, that's a heck of a deal. I gotta go do that. So we're literally gonna go fish while he's replacing the bunk boards. And my best friend, Craig, he's already out there at the lake. He's in his kayak. Uh, so we're gonna go check in with him. What the fishing is gonna be like. I'm thinking it's gonna be really tough though, guys. I got sneeze right now. I'm holding it in. Fight it back. It's done. Fish! Ah! Got another one. There's always that follow-up sneeze. You gotta, you gotta fight hard back. Mm. Got it out. Okay, I'm sure the fishing is gonna be brutal. It's gonna be a hot lava sauce Texas day. Brutal hot Texas day out here. So let's go see if we can figure them out while we're getting our boat trailer fixed. We made it here. Show y'all what we're doing here. So I've unhooked from the trailer and this is the problem right here. You see, get in here and get a nice juicy look at it. These bunk boards, rotten, not good. That one's okay. It's really just this one right here. I could break it at any moment. It's not what we want. So old Randy, he's gonna get us fixed up over here and we're gonna fish while he takes my trailer and uh, goes and fixes it up. So I've got some uh, mystery tackle box videos I'm actually gonna be doing out here. I'm gonna be doing a couple on uh, uh, wacky rigging, the, my hardcore bass fishing, just going and trying to find the fish for this afternoon. So let's see what we can put together, folks, while we're getting the old bunks fixed. Taking her away. Taking her away from me for it. They, they do it in like a couple hours. So uh, when we get this back, if they did a good job, we're gonna check it out and see. Jake, Jake's fishing freak. How you doing, brother? What's going on? I didn't have any extra hats, but I'm gonna give you mine, okay? Heck yeah, I'm gonna put it on right now. Catch a 10 pounder on it, you gotta tag me on Instagram. I sure will. Say it, and it's devoted to me, it's all the hat. <laughs> oh man, I appreciate it. You bet, take care, have man. Have a good one, man. Good luck. All right, gotta find myself another hat now. I think I got something figured out though, since it's gonna be a crazy hot day. Just wait for it. Now we're mobile. We're gonna go see if we can find my friend Craig, my best friend Craig. I think this is the perfect day, the perfect opportunity for the official big Texas hat. On a day like today, this is when you want a big old hat to cover your neck. Put a little shade on you. Not only is it stylish, it's also very functional and extremely Texan. It's my best friend Craig. Long time no see. Ah, oh, it was great. Just enough time to get my mind right. As you can tell, I'm very well put together today. You look, you look fantastic. Right. What's the fishing report, buddy? Man. Caught uh, too early right off this wall. One was really nice. About five pounds. Five pounder. And the other was about three. Right off the riprap? Yeah, I mean, popper real close to the edge. I mean, one of them had it halfway down his throat. Wow. Any schooling activity? No, I've seen him chase some shad, but no no big schools. But I've seen. You got better eyes than me, though. I think it's the sunglasses. I don't know. You have x-ray vision. I think it's the hat. It could be. Knocks down the glare. It could be the hat. That's like, that's worth a thousand shade trees right there. While my boat's being fixed, I figured I'd come out here and see what was going on. I'm sure it's probably getting tough right now. Yeah, it's starting to get a little tougher. It's slowed down a little bit. Well, I missed the early bite. Craig's confirmed it. He slayed, uh, slayed a five pounder this morning on the old Pop R. 
I'll send you a picture. You'll see. Yeah. He'll post it up on the Instagram. My best friend Craig. At my best friend Craig. If you want to follow my best friend Craig. It's pretty simple. Catching up with my buddy Craig and uh, his buddy Nate was actually out here too. Did a little kayak fishing. They had uh, they had a four and a five pounder early. Top water action was hot, and then it just shut down. And so they're leaving, which is a pretty smart idea. But I'm not leaving. I'm out here creating content today, all about creating the content. And it's time to go check on the trailer too. Well, she's all fixed up now. I'll show you guys when I get off the water. 300 bucks, they come out, they take care of it. Sorry about the brightness. They towed my trailer off, put new treated wood, new carpet, all new rivets and everything, 300 bucks, so not a bad deal. And you get to fish while you're doing it, even though it's a thousand degrees out here right now. Oh, we're finally out. And we can fish with ease. Knowing that our trailer has been fixed. It's just a total suckage type day out here as I figured but I'm dragging the old ball and chain right now I got a I got a couple of fish on the electronics here out on a main lake hump just idled over it and saw a few fish out here they don't look that big either there's not a whole lot of positives going on right now but I'm trying to make the most of it here for you guys Carolina rigging it's just it's key it's key for this time of year I would say Carolina rig and pretty much any type of finesse worm rigging like drop shot, shaky heads, crankbaits become really good too. We're out in about 24 feet of water right now. Where I'm casting is probably 21, 22. And so it's like 50 feet all around here. And then it just jumps up to this hump. So a little hangout spot. Could be multiple species here. Could be white bass, could be barfish. But we're hoping for old big largemouth. This is traditionally a spot where I have caught some large bass, but usually it's it's in the fall, sometimes in the summer. Just kind of hit or miss in the summer. But I hadn't been here in so long, man. I just started going over to my waypoints and just kind of checking some stuff out. And a lot of the deep spots, uh, they didn't have fish on them. They didn't have shad on them. This spot really doesn't have shad either. It's just got fish holding. Well, if you guys can see all this, I mean, that's a good group of fish right there. I just don't know what they are they could be could be white bass or something i'm gonna get out a spoon here in just a minute if none of these are gonna bite my carolina rig you can see some of them moving up and down on the electronics that's a good sign if they're bass i should be able to catch a couple of them out here in about 25 feet which i i don't think is really good like they're if they're not up there where my lure is they're probably just out here in a little deeper water hanging out there's just nothing happening out here in the deepness, folks. It's just deepness and sadness out there. Normally the fish is pretty good out here deep, but they're not out here. The old spots I used to really catch them, they're just not here deep, man. Not here deep. I've got the weighted wacky rig where I can hit suspended fish. So literally throwing at the trees, sitting out here in 15 to 20 letting that sink down the trees because there's bass that are suspended with some of the bait fish. Then I've got two cranks. I've got a deep diamond crank and I've got a medium diamond crank so I can throw it in between the trees here. I haven't seen any schooling activity yet, but probably will eventually. And then I've got a Carolina rig. So if I come across a group of fish out on a, on a point that's pretty sharp or something, I can just throw out there and really target them but I'm switching it up every 30 seconds to a minute, switching baits, trying to get a bite. It is very difficult out here. Full moon, uh, high sun, and I think there's a tournament today, which uh, results probably be pretty poor. I don't know guys, this, this is a lake where um, when they don't want to bite, they ain't biting. It's better to just sit in the AC, chill out, 
until your buddy calls and says, hey man, fish just turned on. That's when you get in the truck and head out there. But I'm out here doing this for you guys, trying to figure out a pattern. So hopefully I can uh, get on a bass or two by the evening time. I got like a 300 yard stretch here of main lake trees, a couple of little secondary points. You would think one of these techniques is gonna catch a bass. Look at this. Out of nowhere, it just starts blowing like crazy. It's ripping and it just dropped like 15 degrees. Feels great, but I don't know. It's looking pretty dirty back there. This area is notorious for bad storms. It could blow through or it could be nasty. I'm gonna wait it out and see. I wanna catch a bass, dang it. We'll see if we can wait, it, wait this one out. We're gonna get an opportunity to safely fish, but if it starts lightning, it's time to crank her oven at home. I got completely soaked. I'm just gonna have to show you the bunk boards, the new bunk boards when we get home. I wanted to catch a bass, but it started lightning out there. It went from like flat calm to three foot waves. It was not a good situation. Hopefully I've got a, another shirt in here somewhere. Unfortunately I don't have pants. I apologize for the pastiness here, folks, but uh, it's just a situation I'm in. I was completely soaked from waves. I almost speared a couple of them. We're not gonna let it get us down. We at least accomplished getting the bunk boards renewed today. Now we're gonna go see OSG in Winston. They always brighten up the day. Found this crumpled old big sexy shirt in the back of my truck. And yes, I do realize how ridiculous this hat is, but I needed a big Texas sombrero for this hot Texas heat we got going on. Disclaimer, if you're gonna rock one of those hats, it's good for five mile an hour winds. Gets over that, you're in trouble. Also, I just remembered, I have been meaning to check on my bass mount that I told you guys about. Uh, the video I did of my biggest bass ever that came from this lake. And uh, the taxidermist people that I decided to go with, they're right here. And I just remembered that. So I think I'm gonna stop in and, and check it out. Well, they're closed, unfortunately. You can see those bass in the window though. That's what we're going for right there, baby. Big old bass eating a jig on a stump. Gonna get something cool like that. There's a dog in there. Well, hell, if there's a dead gum dog in there. Let me just go in here and check. All right, good news, fishing freaks. My fish is ready. I'm not gonna show you guys yet. They're still, they're working on the habitat, like the actual fish is ready. I just wanna show you guys some of the fish that are in here, show you some examples. Mm-hmm. 
That's what I, that's a giant right there. Look at that. That's a 10.7 pounder. That's about like what mine's gonna be right there. This is what I like. I like mouth closed. Mouth closed right there. This one right here, this Jay Collins right here, this bass, this is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? That, that's one of my favorites. That is absolutely awesome. That's what the better, well, that's, that's the better one. It's oh, just yeah. not up close. That's one of the coolest mounts I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's in somebody's office, you said. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, you gotta love, man. You gotta love going in the, do the taxidermist. That's good times right there. My nose is cleared out right now. I'm not sure what they use in that replica stuff, but um, my nose was literally on fire breathing in there. So um, I hope everyone that works in there uh, wears a mask from time to time. But they're gonna be doing a special habitat mount for this fish. And uh, I'm gonna be getting with um, the taxidermist on like the habitat uh, pretty soon. So I'll have some updates for you guys. And hopefully we'll have that fish done by the end of the summer and I can show it to you. I'll do a big video on it because it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a waller, as they say. Put it up on the wall, baby. Now it's time to drive in the rain. Going back to OSG. I'm not gonna put my seatbelt on because I know somebody's gonna yell at me on, on the interwebs. We made it and it's still raining. Let's check out these bunk boards, fishing freaks, before the rain gets too crazy again. So this is what got replaced right here. Lighten this up for you, there we go. So these are the boards right here. New carpet on these bad boys. Treated wood on the sides, on the wheel wells. Um, all new rivets and everything. Uh, looks really good, looks really sharp. Go towards the back here. I, I like how I like how they kind of rounded this out. They kind of cut that at an angle right there. If you see that, that looks good, I like that. And if you see up under here, you can see the wood. You can see that treated wood, which is actually a good thing. You might think that you want the carpet to go all the way around, but you actually don't. That's how my old boards were. And when the carpet goes all the way around, it actually makes the water sit there longer and that's what makes your boards rot out so when you're replacing the bunk boards remember to leave that strip in the middle so the water can drip out and it prevents that um, that rotting from from happening so if you're gonna do it yourself make sure to do that if you can afford to get somebody to do it I would definitely recommend the guy if you're in the DFW area go over to fork go fish on a better day, go on a good day and then have him do it and uh, for 300 bucks he had it done in three hours and um, he did a good job. So if you guys are looking to replace, you might want to go do that. Old Red is ready to ride again. Hopefully no more problems. If you watched the last vlog, it's kind of one of the worst boat towing days ever. I'm sorry the fishing sucked today, guys. And I, I wanted to get out there at the very end of the day. I was hoping to get on a topwater bite at the end of the day and just kind of get some fish feeding. Uh, but that storm was just rough. I got totally soaked. It was lightning. I don't play around with lightning. But I promise on the next video, we're gonna be going into some hardcore tips on the old buzz bat. I ended up catching a monster fish on one of these um, and some other really nice fish in a video I was doing for MTB. So I wanted to go through buzz bait tips, tricks, and when to fish them. So yeah, this one's not very good. But I am gonna show you what will make a really good buzz bait on the next video. We'll see you later on the next one.